And welcome in to be our guest. You've heard the expression, man's best friend. That's the question. What's the answer? It's normally considered to be a dog. Think about this. You've had a rough day, and you come home, and you walk in the door, and here's that little pooch with that tail going 90 miles an hour saying hi. No matter how his day has been, when he sees you, he's ready with that smile that comes from his tail. But you know, having a pet is good, but you have to make sure you're getting the right pet and taking care of them the right way. And I've got a special guest, Brian Vinti. And Brian, you are an animal behavior specialist, and you work in training animals. Yes, sir. And of course, you know, Brian, our viewers are people that are basically 50 years of age and older. If they're thinking about getting a dog, what are some hints that they need to know? One thing they need to do is make sure they, they understand what their lifestyle is like, mm -hmm. how much time they have to devote to training and to exercising their dog. Mm -hmm. um, so for an older person, maybe not getting a puppy would be a good idea because puppies take a lot uh, of time uh, they for do. training, potty training, mm -hmm. um, as well as you know exercise. And when I talk about exercise, you know dogs need mental and physical exercise. Uh as well so you really mm -hmm. have to determine what your lifestyle is like how much mobility you have mm -hmm. um, how much time you can spend with training and exercising your dog before you go and select that dog um, also if you have a family if, if there's more than one person in the household you really need to make sure everyone in the house is on board with getting a dog mm -hmm. um, you don't want to get a dog as a present for somebody because <laughs> It's a lot of work, it's a lot of responsibility, sure. and you have to prepare yourself for that work, that responsibility. So if everyone in the household isn't on board, then that dog isn't going to feel that it's part of that pack, part of that family. Mm -hmm. So everyone needs to be involved with the training, with the care, with the upkeep of that dog. Mm -hmm. um, so the older individual might want, like I said, stay away from puppies, look at a older dog and I always recommend that people go to shelters or rescues to find dogs not pet Good. stores or things like that hmm. there are a lot of dogs out there that need help that are in bad situations and they're great dogs um, and they oh, yeah. really do appreciate it when they get rescued from those shelters mm -hmm. um, so you can do a great thing by rescuing an older dog because uh, when people go to shelters and rescues typically they're looking for those little puppies you know um, but uh, those older dogs would fit perfectly with someone who has less time to spend training a young dog mm -hmm. or less time to take the dog on walks every day or is less mobile. Those older dogs would be a better fit for that kind of individual. Okay, so sometimes you get an older dog and there is the old adage you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So sometimes an older dog can be kind of set in his ways. Can they be changed yes. at that point? Yeah, there is, it's never too late to train Good. a dog. That old adage, you can't train old dogs new mm -hmm. tricks, is completely false. Great. Um, there is, it's never too late to train a dog. Um, dogs live in the moment. So if they're taught a new way of behaving, of acting, then they revert to that. If mm -hmm. they're not taught or educated, then they just revert to what they know, what they've done. So any age of a dog is trainable as long as you stay consistent, and stay dedicated to what you want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Now, you actually have a service that we need to let our viewers know that if you have a dog already or you are going to be getting a dog, that you can actually come in and help them with this. Is that right? That's correct. I do in-home training. So I would come to the client's house. I work with them, their dog, and anyone else that has daily interactions with their dog. And what I do is, uh, first I do an evaluation on the dog to make mm -hmm. sure it doesn't have any major behavioral problems that need to be addressed specifically. Um, and then once we can rule those out, I set up a training protocol and teach the owner how to install and implement that training protocol and the rest of the family, if there is one, how to install that training protocol. Because if the owner does the training, then the dog takes to that individual right, more. Right. They respect and care for that individual more than if a trainer comes in or you send your dog out to a trainer. Mm -hmm. um, I could train a dog and bring it back to an individual, but then that dog is trained no, to me, trained to you. That's not right. to the person. So it's right. always better that the owner gets heavily involved in that training. Right. Absolutely. And just remember this, especially if you're getting a little bit older, a dog makes a wonderful companion, as I mentioned on the onset, 
They're always happy to see you no matter what, and they're a good source of positive thinking and joy. And we'll be right back right after this.